Good morning, Pat. Hi, Pam. Hi, Janice. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining me. Hi, Margaret. Good morning. I'm a little, I'm excited today. I can finally show you the inside of the catalog. Woo -woo. I know I could have done it the other day, but I forgot. <laughs> Actually, no, we were a day ahead last time. Never mind. Hi, Donna. Hi, Judy. Trudy. Nice to see you all. We got all this awesome stuff in here. Good morning, Karen. Hi, Christina. Good morning, Adrian. I have so many things like earmarked you can see in here. <laughs> stuff that I ordered. Yeah. Oh, it's sunny, Donna. I'm so happy. It's sunny here, too. I, it was so bright. I almost didn't know it was in the sky. <laughs> Good morning, Trudy. Christina, I hope you're having some beautiful weather. Oh, thank you for watching, Pat. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate all the shares. Um, before we actually get started with the card, I was going to kind of just show you a um a few things in the catalog that maybe you might have missed because there's a couple things the way they laid out the new catalog. Some people thought things were gone, but they really weren't. So I thought we could go over just a couple things. Good morning, Michelle and Peggy. Thank you all for watching. Let me turn the volume down on my thing here so I don't have to listen to myself talk. Okay, I got everybody's comments up as well. Oh, you're still, well, hang in there, Adrian. It's been just, it hasn't been storming, but it's been raining. And yesterday, I think it was like 62. I'm really not sure what's up with the weather. It's totally crazy. <laughs> Good morning, Stacy. Thanks for watching from New York. Yeah, the Ohio girls are in the house. We need to, um, we need to have a competition on how, how, how many people we have from one place versus the other. Thank you, Peggy. I appreciate you sharing. And Reba, good morning from the Texas Panhandle. I bet it's probably a little earlier there. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys, just in case you missed it, I will keep watching the comments, but a few people um, thought maybe they discontinued some of the embellishments. Ooh, hold on, my book got all stuck together here. But, oh, Pamela, you're in Pennsylvania. There you go. You're close, Pam. <laughs> the DSP is way too small. I have, you know, I haven't even noticed that, to be honest with you. It definitely is smaller. You're right about that. I think the one thing that you can, um, if you want to see some parts of it bigger, if you look, it does say what page it's listed on. So let's go to 68 and 69. I don't know how much bigger it will be, but it's not really very much larger there. It's definitely larger online. So if you wanted to get a good look at it, that's probably the best way to do it. Or I could just order a package of each and share it with you guys. <laughs> I do have a couple packs of um, some of the stuff, but I know, I think like in order to fit some of the stuff in, I guess more size wise, they change other things, which I do agree with you. Sometimes I think like they put the bundles down here together a little bit smaller. And I know you can go and look at the dies back where they are on 216, but they're still kind of small as well. I think they're just trying to probably fit the most they can as possible into their, um, yeah, you can't appreciate, you can't appreciate a lot of, I'll tell you what, honest here, I can't find a lot of things in the catalog, and I thought some things were gone myself, that's why I figured I'd go over it with you guys, but there's a lot of things where I'll look and I'm like, oh, I didn't know they had those, I guess I missed them the first time, so kind of still going through this catalog, like every time for me is new. <laughs> hey Judy, thank you for joining. Yeah, the Broadway paper is all metallic on the other side, that is a, a very good point. And, um, yeah, so it's gold foil on one side, which is pretty cool because if you flip it, you can, that kind of makes you more inclined to use the pretty parts. But if you had a piece that you needed to flip, that's good that you could use gold foil. You get some extra gold foil. Oh, hi, Christy. Thanks for joining in. You can watch me make cards and hopefully not make too much of a fool of myself. That's my uh, friend Heather's sister. So welcome, Christy. I don't think you've ever, I've caught you here live before. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to show you was... The, a few people thought that the embellishments, the pearls and whatnot were gone, but they kind of show different things. So they're here. So the pearls and the rhinestones, but they, they chose to shoot, show the new ones, which are red. 
which is kind of weird, but I don't, I don't know. Some of the stuff, I guess the way it is to me, it seems confusing because you would think like people thought, Oh, they got rid of the pearls and the rhinestones and they didn't tell anybody, but they're there. They just ordered them differently, I guess, to bring attention to the new stuff. So, so those are still there. Um, they do have these new metallic pearls. So these are gold and silver, which they're really pretty. And then they have the, um, the pearls that are in the in colors and they still have the gems, which I don't really use the gold ones. And I think probably a lot of people don't use the gold because I think last year they had the silver featured. So right. You're ab absolutely right. It's good thing watching different people in videos because you, you see things that you probably didn't notice. And then these are faceted gems, but you know, they got rid of the, the dots that kind of coordinated with the colors since the colors changed, but these have glitter in them. Which they're cute, but I probably wouldn't use glitter dots. I do like the, the pearls and the plain pearls. I like the plain pearls too, though, because then you can color them whatever color you want. So that's another good idea as well. And um, they added some sequins, which these already have adhesive on them, so they should be a lot easier to add. They have some stickers where the, they had these that went along with the... Um, oh, heavens, I can never remember the name of it. The Eastern Beauty set, they had those as well. So these coordinate with the tea room. And then they still have the buttons from the True Gentleman Suite, even though they didn't carry over the stamp set. They did carry over the punch. But the tropical ones, these are super cool. And these, this is one of the first ones that caught my eye. So this stuff comes tomorrow. So I can't wait to use this. I know it is, it is a little similar to the botanical blooms that we had. But, oh my gosh, the paper. Now, they really showed you this paper, the 6x6. Six six. This is really cool. I'm glad they did a big layout of this so you could totally appreciate it. And, um, hey, Tammy and Pat and Lisa, thank you guys for hopping in. And they also have some really pretty ribbon that coordinates with this. But the coolest part in the dies is this one that makes, like, the little window. <laughs> And I am such a cheese ball. This all reminds me of the Golden Girls. And I love the Golden Girls. But it, I just like every time I open this page, I want to sing, thank you for being a friend. We were in the store the other day walking, as a matter of fact, in Ikea when I got my boxes. And the original version of that played the guy that sings it. I don't know, whatever it was. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if everybody in here just started singing, totally singing the Golden Girls like we were walking. That would be like the best flash mob ever. But apparently I was the only one that thought it was cool. <laughs> So, anyway, um, Shirley, if you would send me your mailing address either to my email or you can send me a private message, I will be happy to send you one. It comes usually in two business days because I ship it in the faster thing. I just need your full mailing address and your zip code to reachthestamper at gmail.com and I can send you a free catalog. But there's a couple other things in here in the back that I kind of wanted to go over with you quickly. I know a few other people shared this and I thought it was a really, really good idea to share. So if you notice, some of the things in here have different colors. So what they did was they kind of coordinated these a little better so you know what to do with them. So if you see, for example, the gray, that's just a standard die. That just means you can use your regular cutting pads. So your clear acrylic cutting pads. And then um, if you want to use your magnetic platform, you could. But remember, if you have a pacemaker, don't get the magnetic platform. And um, I know she did such a good video, Donna. I'm sorry. Donna's saying that she loves the video, watching Kelly um, Ackison. I can never pronounce her last name correctly. She did an awesome video the other day. If you guys don't watch her, you should follow her as well. But she did a really cool card and a really really neat technique with marbles which was incredible so I'll if you haven't seen that I'll do one of those later on but she should get the fanfare because she brought that technique back which I've never seen before but anyway big shot platform would be the gray and then you have your regular cutting pad and then you would put your I'll just show you this right here you would put your paper down and you'd put your die so this is what you cut out and then you put your or you put this underneath sorry your other cutting pad and that's your sandwich so that's going to be like your regular sandwich for anything gray then, of course, I don't have all my plates out. For green, you're going to need the precision base plate. So basically, anything that has a green on it here, so if you can see the beautiful layers, the birds and blooms, mostly just the birds because they're very detailed, um, the botanical tags, chase your dreams, 
the floral thinlets over here, Eastern Medallion, it definitely suggests these for the, the more intricate rings, Delicate Lace, the Dragonflies, the Flourish, and then also you have your Lakeside for the water and for that little reed. And then the other cool thing, which is the pop-up. This is kind of similar to the roller coaster. I did order this, so we'll see if I have better luck than I did with the roller coaster. Yeah, so definitely, Reba, you don't want to have the magnetic platform if you have a pacemaker because that could cause a major problem. And there is a little um, note on there, but I always like to tell people that because, you know, sometimes you miss little things in the catalog. Um, the pines, definitely better to have the detailed the precision base plate and then the springtime impressions that is this as well which I will tell you I cut this one out and I just used the regular plate for this and that's actually cut pretty well but this one with the all the little flowers oops somebody's picture fell off that would um definitely be better off with the deep the precision base plate so anyway we have a couple more here and then to go back then they have the embossing dies okay so these are the dies that basically, instead of actually cutting, what it will do is it will put the print of this onto your paper, okay? So you would really have the outline of the butterfly. So for example, if you were, and I haven't practiced this enough to, I was going to show you guys this, but I need to practice it more because I wasn't doing a very good job. So if you were to want... I'm not sure if this is the first, I'm not sure if this is the first time, actually, Karen, they could have done it before, but it's the first time I noticed, let's put it that way. So if you were to want to, instead of cutting this out, say you had your quarter sheet of cardstock and, or just a little piece, and you just wanted to put the impression of this on it, and you could kind of use it as a layer, then what you would want to do is you're going to make your sandwich differently. So you're going to have your, um, magnetic platform so this basically this doesn't cut your standard cutting pad okay your paper your die and your pad so this which this to me sounds a little weird but I'd have to test this out this is how you would actually emboss so you would use your die to emboss so instead of actually cutting it it's going to put the impression of this into the paper Okay, so man, that's that sounds a little crazy the way it works. And the other thing was too, I don't know if any of you have looked onto Sizzix, but if you ever get confused about anything, Sizzix has a lot of information because Sizzix is the maker of these dies and of the big shot and whatnot. And Sizzix has a lot of information on how to use your all of your inform all of your tools correctly, basically so you don't warp them. Yeah, a lot of people do do use a shim. That's true. That is true. And I have had a few times where I kind of crank it and I'm like, eh, I don't know. I feel like I might break something. So I backed it out and put, you know, put like maybe a little thin piece of cardboard or a couple pieces of cardstock in instead. But you really want to make sure when you do this, you, you don't want to bend your dies, which is why it's really important to use the correct um, folder combination. However... There's different things you can do with them if you're willing to play around with your dies and kind of say, well, let me see if I can work this through without getting it to work. Which also led us to having the um, embossing plate, which I don't have ours. I ordered ours. I actually ordered one directly from Sizzix. This is a mat, and it's not really exactly the same as what we have. So let me just backtrack just for one second. So anything that's going to have this green here that's going to going to say that you can emboss it will have it so you have like your eclectic layer so basically this instead of cutting this doesn't really have cutting it's got more of an impression if that makes sense so it's kind of like an impression folder but instead it's like an impression die and I hope that makes sense because that sounds a little double speaky and redundant but you can use it for the staircase for the coffee cup so what it's doing is it will kind of put the impression into it instead of actually cutting it out. But the Stampin' Up! mat, this is the new embossing mat. And I am fairly certain I ordered this, but I, I'm hoping I did. If not, I have to make sure. But basically what this does is this will do the same thing where you can, instead of cutting something, you can put the impression onto something. And you can do this with 
a lot of dyes. So you could use this on any dye that you wanted to. So for example, if you wanted to use this instead of cutting, because this does have cutting blades on it, so instead of cutting, if you wanted to make an impression, you would just use the embossing mat. Now Stampin' Up! just yesterday, I believe, released a video on their um, YouTube channel. So if you aren't a follower of Stampin' Up! on YouTube, they do put videos on, um, to, on how to use different products. I will say sometimes they kind of go a little too fast where maybe they're not as thorough as they could be, which is why a lot of demonstrators will go back and make another video as well. So if you check out Stampin' Up! they do have a video for the, um, the embossing pad. So I would suggest watching that video and then, like I said, once I get mine, because they have three different things that come with theirs and the one that I got from Sizzix a while back only has two. So this is a hard plate and then you have like this floppy mat, which this is the part that basically kind of lets it have more give. Um, will the Sizzix work? This is all for Sizzix. These are all for the um, Big Shot machine. So any, or if you have happen to have a cuddle bug, I've used that before, before I was able to get a Big Shot. So Stampin' Up! has a third mat that comes with theirs. So I think this one has a little bit more play of what you can do with it. So the color coordination is really good. So just make sure, you know, if, if in doubt, get your catalog out. Wow, if that isn't a catchphrase, if in doubt, get your catalog out and you can look and see what matches up. For example, so the Nature's Roots, which is a beautiful set, they have these three leaves that you get embossed onto your cardstock. So you could make a layer with your leaves on it, which would be really cool as well. So same thing with this new, the Park Thinlets. It has these little rocks, which are really, really cool. And then you also have your bench. So you could use that instead. So just make sure if you're not sure what's going on, go ahead and get your catalog out and just find the set that you want to use. Oh, the birds and blooms. Okay, so this. And then make sure you have all of your little pieces out. That way you do it correctly. Now, you still have the same with your embossing folders. They kind of went the same way. They have a darker orange and a lighter orange. So this is probably more like Calypso Coral and Grapefruit Grove. But basically, these are the difference between the dyes that are regular dyes and then the fat dyes which are really really thick and give you a super deep impression let me grab my uh, dyes real quick so just in case you haven't seen these before so this is my my i got this from stamp and storage it holds all of my stuff in it but basically you have this is the basket weave and then let me grab one that's regular and this is the sparkle okay so you can see just the difference between the two of these right now the sparkle is really flat, and this one is really, really fat. It's very deep. So this will give you that really deep textured piece of paper. And one other tip that um, people suggest is if you want to get a really, really deep emboss in it, to just lightly spritz your paper, and I mean very lightly with the um, Stampin' Spritzer, just with a little bit of water because it will help to break up the patterns a little bit, okay? The Sizzix, yeah, you could, Sizzix, with Sizzix, okay, so Sizzix makes the Big Shot, Sizzix makes all the dyes, okay, so these are all Sizzix brand, and they're made specially for Stampin' Up, so you couldn't just get this at the Sizzix store because it's Stampin' Up's flower, or Stampin' Up's embossing folder, okay, because they all say Sizzix, so the, Sizzix is the brand that makes them. So basically, this will work on your big shot, or again, if you have a cuddle bug. I started out with cuddle bug. Um, and then, hold on, what was the other one I saw? So the dynamic folders, basically, there's two different ways you're going to use these. So I'm going to show you these, and then I'll explain this part. So you have two different things, same thing, color combination here. This is a thin, this is a regular embossing folder. Okay, you can see it's very thin. And then this is a textured impressions embossing folder, which basically means it makes a really deep etching in your paper and it makes it look 3D. So that's this one. So as you can see, it's much fatter. So when it's closed, okay, this is a regular one. This is a dynamic folder. And then same thing, you can see the difference when they're open. You can see how this one is definitely really thin and this one is much thicker. So what you'll do is, this is the basket weave, for example. So you can see the basket weave is color coded to the lighter orange. So what you need is one cutting pad because basically you can't fit this in the machine because it's so fat if you use two cutting pads. So you would take your platform 
your cutting pad. This is the dynamic. This is, again, the bigger one. You would put your piece of paper in. And again, if you like lightly spritz this with water, it makes the fibers a little easier to break up. You close it, you put it down, you put one cutting pad on top, and you run it through. Okay, so this is for the dynamic, so the light orange. So again, anything that's dynamic is color-coded light orange. So light, 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 light. And then you have all these over here, which you can see I have almost all of them, which is sad. But anyway, the other thing is if you have a regular embossing folder, okay, so which is the thinner one. So again, here's the thinner embossing folder. This is the sparkle, which is over here, the dark orange. So the dark orange is here. So you're going to put your Big Shot platform you're going to put cutting pad number one, you put your folder, you put your paper in, close it, put your second cutting pad on, and then you crank it through. So basically, the difference is between these two, you have one extra cutting pad. If you were to put both of these on with this, this big one here, you will not be able to crank it through your machine, and probably if you did, you will break it. So, But yeah, I, I learned the water trick um, not too long ago, Teresa, from... I uh, guess it must have been probably last Christmas or whenever they first started coming out with these. Which one was it that came out? The Cable Knit. So that probably was last holiday catalog, the Cable Knit. Because we were using it to make sweaters, things. And it was really, really cool because you could make the stuff almost like, it really looked very vividly 3D. So I think these are really, really, really cool. But anyway, spritzing with just a little bit of water, doesn't have to be a lot, will have the, uh, will help. You had the old, old embossing. You know, I'm not sure, Janet, because again, I ordered this one because I was watching some other videos. So I was like, well, I'll just get the Sizzix mat and see what happens with it and try it. And I'll be honest with you, I have never used this because I really couldn't share it with you guys. So I was like, well, what am I going to share something with them if they can't get it anyway? And it was a little bit harder to use, even though the cool thing about Sizzix, they do give you the little instruction on like what to put it with, but I can't get it to work exactly how I thought it could. So I'm really hoping that I ordered the Stampin' Up! one that came out because it actually does come with a third pad, which I think is helpful in the actual impression part of the um, getting the die to become an impression instead of a cut. So we'll, we'll see how that goes when it happens. But anyway, I may put all this stuff out of the way. And I'm pretty sure that's all I want to show you. So you have this. So just remember, just a real quick recap, and you can go back and watch this. It'll always reload with your framelits, your edgelets, and your thinlets. Make sure whatever one you're finding, if you're the apron builder, you're like, oh, that's easy. You just need your gray. If you're going to do the birds, you would make sure you go with your green sandwich here. And then if, for example, you're going to have the coffee cup, you could use your your um, darker green. I guess this is more like a Bermuda Bay-ish. But also... Note here, they do have two. So like you could use, you use the regular gray with this part and then you're gonna only use the green sandwich for just this one. So they do have some of them separated. You can see this is all gray, this is gray, and then the more Bermuda, the Flourish Thinlets are all greens, etc. And then the same thing with your embossing folders. The dark orange are regular folders. The light orange is a dynamic, a 3D, so it's going to make a big impression, so you only need one pad. So that's a little easier to remember. And I think that's it before we get started. You have one scissors, one, yeah. Yes, it definitely does double the use of your dies. That's absolutely right, Karen, because you can use them for so many more things than you thought. So what I wanted to share with you today, let me see. I have the boo, boo listen to me, the bouquet builder. And I don't remember where this is. Let's see if I can find it in the back. And there it is, 111. Oh, I should remember that. That's my birthday. Page 111. Okay. So I thought we would use this today. I saw a gorgeous, gorgeous card. So I'm not sure if we're going to use this, but you can see they gave a lot of love to this whole stamp set here. Okay. So this is the stamp set. It is photopolymer. It does have a lot of stamps in it, a lot of sentiments, which I really liked. And I kind of, this was in the catalog last year, so this was a carryover. Wow, that's a really low plane. I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> Sorry, I got totally distracted. So this was a carryover, but it also has a coordinating framelit. It was actually so loud I couldn't hear, that's why I stopped for a second. So this one, if you go here to the bottom, just so in case you don't know, it does tell you 
what anything coordinates with if it has anything that matches it. So this coordinates with the bouquet bunch framelits die. So you're going to go 216. And then this will show you. Okay, so right here. Gray. So everything in here can be cut out regular way. And hey, Jamie. And then um, what we're going to do is I'm going to do one that's kind of like a scrappy card. So if you were to have scraps. Now granted, I don't really have scraps of this yet because you know, no, I just got my paper all together. So everything has kind of not been really used. But what I thought would be really pretty is this is the new Seafoam. Soft sea foam. I apologize. I still don't know the names of all these things. This is the new soft sea foam. So we're going to make something with this. We're going to use a panel of Thick Whisper White. Oh, I know. It's finally nice. <laughs> and let's see. Luckily, I have all my paper here. It's like slightly easier to get to, I think. Wait a minute. I, just, I didn't label them yet, so I'm still trying to figure out exactly what is what. I think this is the Thick Whisper White. Thick Whisper White I've been using, yup, a lot lately because it is really, I think, so much more versatile than people give it credit for. So I used, I have done a lot of cards with this as the base recently for my um, cards, for my club cards. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into a quarter sheet and I'm going to cut it lengthwise. So I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter. And I don't have a sample of this. I actually was trying to figure out a card that I wanted to make. So I was like thinking back and I made a really cool card. This is going to um, score at five and a half. I really made a cool card a while back when the, um, I think it was the From Land to Sea with the lobster was in. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to uh, four and a quarter. And we're going to just use a quarter sheet of this. So not even really going to use a quarter sheet. So I'm going to just cut it to five. So I was thinking of this idea and I had one where I made like these little strips, which ended up looking super, super cool. So I think that's what we're going to do today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just trimming out a few strips, half inch, because I found I did inch before and it was a little too big. Three quarters is not so bad, but I'm going to just trim off some. Let's see what a half inch will look like. It might be a little too big. We might have to do three quarters. Now, I think it'll look cool. So we're gonna do, we're gonna trim out some half inch strips. So I'm gonna just do five for now. And we can always do more if needed. But again, this is a card you could make if you had like some scraps laying around. I know I don't actually have scraps, I'm making scraps. I'm gonna do just one more. But this is, you could use these in different colors. You could use them in the same color. Kinda just depends what you're going for. So I'm gonna keep my scraps and then I have this other piece here that we're going to kind of use if we need it at the end and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out while we have my I have my big shot over here so I'm going to just move this piece over this is going to be a really quick and easy card they come up with the concept in their head oh thank you that's really nice I appreciate that you know the funny part was I actually came up with this idea when I was in the shower because I was trying to think what can I do today because I was going to do something with the impressions folder I mean the embossing folder and then I tried that and it didn't work out the way I wanted to and I was like well, I, I hate to just give them something just to say well I did something and I'm done with it so I thought what would be fun and I really like the soft seafood so that's kind of where I came up with the idea for this all right so right now I have my big shot platform and I do have the thin die adapter in here I have my cutting pad and I'm gonna cut both of these out so I'm gonna use the stems and oh, you can see I've never taken these off before. I usually take these off and then I get some um, magnetic sheets from Amazon. And then what I do is I will put the magnetic sheet. I'll put this onto the um, magnetic sheet just so I have the, the square measure. And then I will just take these off and stick them on so they're easier to get on. So just to show you, I have the up up and away so what I'll do is I'll cut out this little and it's really cheap it's not really heavy magnet because it doesn't really need to be like strong strong and also it fits in there a little bit better but then basically you have to just pull your pieces off as you need them so it's really makes everything very simple the only thing that I'll say that is the hardest part of it is you want probably want to do it as you have this here that way you know where the pieces fit 
or maybe take a picture of it with your phone before you pull it off because sometimes fitting them back on again is the, probably more of a puzzle than anything. But I just basically take my um, whatever sheet came with it and I'll stick it to that and then that's it. So pretty simple. Keeps them all organized. And, it, and they're not really very expensive. They're like eight, eight by 11 sheets or eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I'll put the link in um, when I go back on later. So anyway, I have the stems that I'm going to cut out. And then I'm going to cut out the these little, I guess they're kind of like daisies. I don't know. We'll see what they are. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut a couple of these out. These I'm going to do in white. And then this, I'm going to just do one stem. So I'm going to do this in... Just a little scrap I have here. I think this is old olive. So I'll just do a little scrap of old olive. And then I have some white scrap. And I'm going to cut this these little flowers out a couple times. So this is fine. This is just a regular piece of uh, Whisper White. All right, so we're going to run this through. I'm going to put this one here. And we'll do this one at the bottom. And then I'm just going to add my extra cutting platform. And it is pretty bent up, but that doesn't affect how it cuts. We're just going to roll it through. Ah, Danette, better late than never. That's right. I think those are the same thing, Brenda. Actually, my in-laws use those. Oh, heavens. Just lost some ink. My in-laws use those magnetic furnace covers as well. And I think they're just like, just little pieces of magnet. So, all right. So we have our stems and these are so delicate but they're really really pretty so you figure if I have one I'm gonna cut out at least three more of these little white pieces here so just chat amongst yourselves while I do this <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the sides so and I'll break it and I can't tell you how many sets of um these cutting pads that I really really warped because I kind of went through them not in the best way when I was first starting out and if for any reason you ever get these that they won't come out I just use my little paper piercing tool and you just have to pop one of them and they kind of pretty much come oops that one came out now it fell back in they come right out so I'm going to do two more but the paper piercing tool is really good too so I have a lot of these um these plates, these cutting pads, because I know people are like, oh, you can put it in the oven and cook them and put this and that and the other on them. That's just too much trouble. I think they're only like $8. So usually I'll buy an extra one and I'll have like an extra set. And sometimes I'll have an extra set that I just use just for white paper. Because at times, if you do a lot of stuff with um, cutting color paper, sometimes it can get stuck in here. So I do have one set that I only use for white paper just that way the little pieces that are left over don't get trapped into your paper when you're making your project nothing worse than going through all the trouble of cutting something out and it's got pieces of color in it when you're trying to get it to be really crisp all right I think that's probably enough yeah that's four so we're gonna cut off of that I'm just gonna put this over here all right so here is our this is going to be really simple, I promise you, super simple. I'm just going to take my paper piercer and just pop out the center of these. If you wanted to, you could even cut these again if you were being really adventurous. And then you could inlay the little yellow pieces, but I don't have enough patience for that. But it sounds really good. <laughs> Aloha, Michelle! Thanks for joining us all the way from Hawaii. I feel so privileged. Michelle is a member of Team Stampin' and she's currently on, like, I don't even know how long of a vacation it is in Hawaii been looking at all of her gorgeous sunset pictures. I'm so jealous. Should be, are you over there vis visiting Angie? Angie Silva, I feel like she lives there. And then there's one other lady, and I cannot think of her name right at the moment. She lives there as well. But I am jealous. I love Hawaii. I've been there one time, a long time ago. It was so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to just put this back on here now so I don't lose it. I think this went this way. And that's out there. So this I'll put on a magnetic sheet and then it will just fit. That's why I trim it to this because it'll slide right back in here so you don't have to worry about trying to store it again. And then we're going to figure out what kind of sentiment we want to put on our card. And this one has a lot of really, really beautiful sentiments. I really like the fact that it has some that's um, type and some that's in script because I think those color combinations are really, really pretty. So... I did pick up my grandson. Oh, you can always watch it again, Linda. It'll be on the reload. Don't worry. You can go to the Rach the Stamper Facebook page. It'll be pinned to the top. 
So I think we're going to do thanks a bunch, which is really cute. And then on the inside, we'll put, I couldn't have picked a better friend than you. And maybe we'll add a little bit of flowers on the inside. So what we'll do is we have our piece here. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside first. That way I don't mess it up. And since I just had this little mat here, I'm going to grab my um, paper piercing mat to stamp this for the inside. That way we get a nice solid image. So when you use your photopolymer stamps, you want to make sure you stamp onto either like a stack, your catalog you could use or a stack, stack of paper or magazines. But it needs some foam to transfer with since it doesn't have foam, since these are just the plasticky images. All right, so couldn't have picked. Let's see. So all the sentiments almost are all on this one page here. And do 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 where it is. Couldn't have picked a better friend. So we have that. Set that there. And what was the other one I wanted to use? Thanks a bunch. Put this one on the front. So I'm gonna set this here for now. Hopefully I won't lose it. And then what if we just put just down here off at the bottom. I know these aren't gonna be the color they really are, but we're gonna use them anyway. We're gonna use these little I guess these are like a tiny, I don't know, I kind of thought they were like a lilac. We're going to stamp this off to the side with a little branch on the inside as well. So this will just be our pretend flower since this probably is not the color of an actual real life flower. So I'm going to, just to stick with the theme of it, I'm going to use um, old olive for the branch. But then for the flower we'll use to incorporate yellow, we'll do soft saffron. That will be like really pretty, pretty, pretty color flowers. So I'm going to put my branch on here. You could, if you wanted to also, you could use soft sea foam since it would stay. But I thought just since we have this little piece of old olive, we'll kind of bring that back together. Plus I thought if you had the soft sea foam and the old olive on the same thing, it wouldn't really look very cohesive. So I'm just trying to make it similar-ish. 23 days. You only have eight or nine days left. How sad. <laughs> well, I hope you have a wonderful time and you catch a lot more sunsets and sunrises. And some surfing. So I'm going to put this just kind of off to the bottom here. Okay. And I know I did stamp on my mat, but this mat wipes off with either a baby wipe or you can rinse it underneath of the sink. And I don't have my Stampin' Chamois handy because, of course, you know I wasn't prepared for this as usual. So I'm going to just set this on the side and I'll clean it up later. And then I have my flowers. So I'm going to just do these in so, so saffron. And I want to see how dark... I had a piece of scrap. I want to see how dark this is before I stamp it. Oh, that's very pretty. Okay, so it won't be too dark. So let me just ink this up again. All right, so again, that was so saffron, and the um, branch was in old olive. So I'm just going to do my best to kind of line this up on here. There you go. And then if you wanted to... And you could even take your uh, Mango Melody marker and you could put just a teeny, you could put a teeny dot of color on the inside if you wanted to. I know my one stem is looking a little goofy there, so you could put a little bit of this on the inside or, let me fix my stem real quick. I'm just going to take my old olive, the pen tip, and I'm going to just, just fill that in a little bit. There you go. You could also take your, if you have a white gel pen, and you could just fill in your little dot on top of your mango. I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish this. So bear with me one second. Just fill in the center. Right here. It kind of almost makes them look like little daffodils, believe it or not. You know how they're sometimes a little orange in the center. Oh, I think I just color in something I color with my white pen. Got brand new markers and I'm already ruining them. And almost done. And then the other thing was too, if you wanted to, instead of doing something in here with the verse in black, you could do it in the old olive. You could do it in black. Or you could do it in the mango melody. We'll kind of bring that color back in a little bit. So you could just do your white pen. Another fun thing you could do is take your, uh, whoops, wrong color. Take your um, soft sea foam. And you could just put some little teeny dots. Kind of like these trios of dots. Things seem to be better visually in threes. You could just add some little trios of dots. Or you could add some 
Link of Stella if you wanted to, but anyway, you get the idea there. So then we're going to put, oops, our sentiment, and I'm going to stick with it in, I'm going to just do it in black, that way it'll be a little bit nicer, a little bit more of a deep color. So I'm going to use Memento. Oh, stuck on the phone. That's okay, Fran. Don't worry. It'll be there for the replay whenever you get a chance to watch it. <laughs> You're right. You do need to spend, you need to spend more time on the beach for you and I. Okay, so I'm going to just put my sentiment right here in the center. And let me just make sure, because this one is the first time I've used it. So let me make sure it's, that looks beautiful. It's so pretty because it has the, the nice font and the script. So I'm going to just set this in the center and just give it a push. All right, that looks really nice. And we still have to do our thanks a bunch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this. I thought I had another scrap left here. We have a little scrap left of white. This is from where we punched our flowers out. I'm going to do the same thing with the memento ink. And I'm just going to stamp this over here and we'll just trim this out. Okay, so we have thanks a bunch. And since I have them here, I'm going to take my Mango Melody and the Soft Sea Foam, and I'm going to do the same thing with the little dots. I'm just going to do little dots, kind of randomly, not anything really specific. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this. Just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim this with my scissors. You could probably cut it out if you wanted to, like, precisely. But you guys know I'm not very much on the precises of anything. So I'm going to trim this to a square. Rectangle, I should say. And then I'm going to take the ends. I might have to trim this in just a little bit. Hopefully that's square. And I'm going to just cut the corners. And we'll see how this looks. Might need to add a little bit of ribbon to this just to finish it off. All right, so there's that. Move this out of the way. And we're going to, all right, we're going to do our very best. I should have put another panel on here, but we're going to do it this way instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to decide where we're going to start because I'm going to leave a little bit of white space on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my snail and just Put some adhesive here, kind of decide where I want it to be, like how far I want it. Okay, I'm going to press that down. I'm going to put another piece right under it. Okay, and then I'm not gluing that one. I'm going to glue this one. That way you know they're spaced evenly. So you have those together. Put this one under here. Spaced. You pull it out. You have your white space. We'll do it again. Put this one down here, grab another strip, because I'm famous for not putting things straight. Looks pretty good. Push that down, lift this one up, slide it back down. This is a really easy thing to do. Again, you could do this with like similar colors, like pastels or whatever it may be. Oh, thank you for calling me smart, Teresa. I probably only learned this because I goofed it up how many times the first time. But thank you. I'll take it. Same thing again. We're going to move this down. One more. That's why I said to cut six. That way you at least have more in case, you know, not having enough. All right. Let's see. And it's probably a little bit more of a gap at the bottom than I would like, but that's okay. So then you have your extra piece. If you wanted to put one at the bottom, you could. But I'm going to just make sure these are pressed on here really nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and just make sure there's a little teeny piece here. So I'm going to just trim this off. Pretty much everything else lines up. There's a little one over here as well. Oop, got a little cardstock on that. So then you have your front. Okay. So then what we're going to do... I'm going to use, you know what, I can't find it because I cleaned up apparently a little bit too well. And you guys know how I used to have that little sponge in the little container. I have no idea where I put it. That's not good. Let me see if it's up here. Maybe I put it where it's supposed to be in its new spot and that's where it is. Let's see. Along with my chamois and my towels that I usually have out. Yep. Hallelujah. Okay, so here's my little, my little cheat 
and I'm going to show you what to do with this. I'm going to have to put this in front of me because I'm sure I'm going to need it more. But basically, this is just a little sponge, a quarter of a Stampin' Sponge. And then what I do, who oh, haven't used it in a while, is I take a little bit of my uh, Tombow liquid glue and put it in the bottom. And then I'll use my sponge. Oh, might have to rinse this one out. Okay. And where, of course, there's another thing I can't find. There it is. Oh, my silicone mat, silicone pad. So I'm going to put my flower, flip it upside down, and I'm going to put some glue. I think I need a little bit more since it's so dry. Move these things out of the way. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. And this will dry clear, so even though it doesn't look pretty right now. Let's set this here for now. And I'm going to stick, put a little in the front, stick my flowers onto here. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the flowers. So I just have my flowers, I'm going to flip them over. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of put a little glue onto the back of them. There's two. Put this on here. And two. And you could make these yellow if you wanted to, if you wanted something that was a little bit more, whoops, have a little more pop. All right, so I might have to actually go downstairs and rinse this out a little bit so it doesn't stick so badly next time. And this one's a little tiny, so what I'm actually gonna do with this is I'm gonna just trim this off a little bit because we only have this like little little piece left here. So I'm gonna trim one of these. I'm gonna trim off this little piece here. And nobody will really know because they're not really gonna know what this flower looked like. And here. Hold on, I was going for one and then I changed my mind to go to the other. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. All right, and this, move this out of the way. I'm gonna take that downstairs and rinse it out just to be on the safe side. And I'm gonna stick my one little flower over here, just like that. Okay, so that's very simple and pretty. And I have really, really sticky fingers. So give me one sec to get all the rest of this glue off so I don't mess up my ribbon. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab going to be nicest just because I really don't want to pull out the whole ribbon thing since it's not up yet. I'm just going to use some linen thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of linen thread. Is that Did that work well? Let's see the results so far. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people will clean their stuff with the um, hand sanitizer. So I'm just going to take a little bit of linen thread and we probably could have done this ahead of time and wrapped it around, which would be really pretty. You could have it wound around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bow. Nope, hold on, did it the wrong way. So if you want your bows to be flat, especially if you're right-handed and you wrap this way, they won't be exactly flat. But if you wrap them backwards, which does, especially when you have glue fingers, take a little bit of practice, they turn out really flat. I'll say this is pretty good considering, whoops, considering it's stuck to my fingers. I did not have this actual card, just an idea in the shower. <laughs> Maybe I should think of ideas in the shower more often for my cards. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little mini glue dot and I'm gonna stick this on here. Yeah, you know, I, I just recently got this. This was a very last minute purchase for me. Sally, I, uh, I wasn't planning on getting this stamp set. That yeah, looks really cute. This would be totally cute though, if you would have taken that this linen thread and just wound it like around so you would have like look like a uh like a little or the burlap ribbon really cute wrap, wrap it around there as well and then i'm going to take that's not even what i intended to do with it so i'm going to get one more piece and i'm going to wrap this behind our sentiment okay we're going to put this up on a dimensional i think i have those handy you guys would be so proud of me I've actually been cleaning my desk after i'm finished using it which is like a miracle in itself. The other people sing. I sing too. That's probably the worst part. I sing and I plan card ideas. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to wrap 
this around. I'm crazy. What can I say? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to make this a little bit looser because it's not probably quite as long as I should have made it. Make it a little crazy. And I'm going to add in this extra little piece here. So it'll go like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this kind of in between these dimensionals. And hopefully it'll stick to part of it. Oh, that's cute. I'm going to put one more on though because I'm afraid it's going to pop off. So let me just snip one of these little side pieces here. And I'm going to stick this like right over top of these pieces to keep them in. Probably could use a mini glue dot as well. Okay. And look, my graduation thing popped out. There you go. How cute. That's super cute. This is a little bit crooked. Let's see if I can fix that. That's really fun. It was simple. I know it probably took us a long time to get here, but we did do a lot of talking in the beginning. So honestly, if you hung around this long, thanks for hanging. But I think this, this is a really, really fun set and it's so cute. And then we just put the little flowers on the inside. There you go. Yeah. I think I would have liked it just a little bit thicker, a little bit more sticking out. I agree with you, Peggy. Sometimes after the fact, I, I kind of wish I would have changed it a little bit, but really simple card. Really simple on the inside. So again, just in case you haven't seen this, this is the um, beautiful bouquet. And then it also has a matching framelit set, which is the bouquet bunch. It has a lot of stuff with it. This has a lot. It really is a good value because it has a lot of sentiments. I mean, there's a 3, 6, 9, 12. There's like 13 sentiments in there, which is really good. And then you have all these little things, plus the little tiny Mr. and Mrs. Hello for you. So there's lots of fun stuff in there, but really simple. You're new to stamping. Well, welcome. Thanks for watching, Christine. Um, again, like I said, if you need information, thank you so much, Peggy. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys missed the beginning, I did do a lot of stuff talking about the new catalog and kind of which dies and which embossing folders you need, which mats and whatnot to go with, just basically to make it a little bit better for you. So if you didn't catch the beginning, make sure you go back and watch it. It will be available as pretty much as soon as I hit end, and then it takes like a second or so to load. But you can go back and watch any of it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, if you guys need a catalog, all you have to do is send me your full mailing address. You can send it via PM here on Facebook, or you can send it via email at ratesthestamper at gmail.com. Just make sure that you do include your zip code and I can send you the catalog. Usually it takes about two days to arrive. My catalogs come tomorrow, so they won't come until Friday. But there is a lot of really fun stuff in the catalogs, even just ideas, all kinds of stuff. So happy it carried over me too, because, you know, I never saw this until I, I had seen it recently where someone used um, the wood DSP to make like a little fence. We're actually making that card at my class on Friday, so I didn't want to do it on here, but this is equally cute. But you use the little strips and then you have two pieces kind of holding it apart, like a little mini gate. And then they put this on top of it, but with yellow flowers. And it was so cute. Oh my gosh. So, 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 so cute. So anyway, thank you, Becky. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will be back next week, but I'm not sure which day it is yet. Yeah, so you can buy just the stamp set or you can buy the dies or if you buy them together you get a 10% discount if you buy both so more pictures falling I gotta put these pictures in a better spot or they're gonna constantly be falling off while I'm doing Facebook lives all these little children's pictures are falling all over the place so thank you guys as, as always for watching I'm not sure what day I'll be next week but I'll try to announce it a little bit more than four hours ahead of time sorry about that it was so last minute I forgot to do it last night I will post all of this stuff onto my blog later with a picture and all the instructions and everything that we did and also I am in the process of finishing up my newsletter so that should be going out either later today or first thing tomorrow so if you're not on my newsletter list all you have to do is send me your email address just email to me at rachethestamper.com or also you can send it PM tier on Facebook and I will add you to it. I promise I won't send you any junk ever. It's just pretty much like if there's a sale or some new ideas or stuff like that. And once in a while I have some special. So usually it's like maybe once every two weeks. I don't put one out every day because I don't really have too much new stuff to say that often. But thank you all as always for watching. And if I get a chance tomorrow when my stuff arrives, I will let you know. I'll get on here and share it with you. So can't wait to new the, use the new stuff too. Thanks guys. I hope you have an awesome week and a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching.